All right, welcome to the UCW Radio Show. As you guys know, we always have awesome, awesome guests on this show. Today's no different. This girl, her her artwork, her talent is off the charts. I love the work she does. I love what she's doing. She's coming straight to us from Australia. Let me uh, join me in welcoming Danielle Weber to the show. Danielle, hey. how are you? <laughs> hey, so good. How are you? Good, good, good. We finally got this together. We had a couple finally. of glitches, but we're here. <laughs> uh, and I'm so, I'm so happy to have you on the show because I've been admiring your work for some time. The stuff that you do is amazing, is amazing. You know, I know you, 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 you go on other shows, you talk about your background and everything, and we're going to go into that. It's just that you're, you're, the work that I've seen from you doing The Rock and that you have Elvis behind you, you have, <laughs> uh, you know, the hip hop artists, you've been featured in magazines, TV, all over the place, and you're also involved in fitness. So it's, uh, you're like the total package of, of just an awesome person. So uh, tell t- tell us something. Tell us about you a little bit. And I want to talk about the work that you're doing and what, what you have going on. Firstly, thank you. What a wrap. Amazing. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah th- thanks for having me on the show too. Sure. Uh, look, I'm a 28-year-old artist, well, nearly 28, and I uh, live in Melbourne, Australia. Uh, I live and breathe art since I was a young child. And I guess... I sort of evolved from like a, a an artist just working on canvases to now working on massive large scale murals. So, uh, yeah, my work sort of it's anywhere from portraits to landscapes to abstracts. So very versatile. Um, but of course, yeah, my main focus is you know telling stories through my work and honouring people who are here and who have moved on from this world. So yeah. It's quite interesting. <laughs> and and how, how is it you went from doing smaller portraits to doing these big scale jobs? You know, that that's a big transition. Yeah, it is huge. And I was incredibly hesitant uh, when I first started getting asked to paint people's walls in, in you know, brand new homes and newly renovated homes. So right. <laughs> it's a bit daunting because, you know, in your studio, there's room for error, whereas when you're on someone else's property and, and you know, working on their dream home, there's a little bit more pressure involved. So, yeah, look, it was, you know, it's like anything, you, you pretty much just have to learn on the job and learn as you go and, you know, take the, take on the pressure and take on the work, um, you know, as it comes. So that's the best way to learn, I feel. And when you're doing these big jobs, you know, just so that the viewers and listeners could really get a, get a handle on what you do, when you're doing this, you're talking about a 20-foot, 30-foot wall, and you, you're standing yeah. back and you're looking at it. What goes through your mind at that moment? There has to be something. Like, I, I would think, <laughs> like, holy crap, I don't know if I can do this. But <laughs> <laughs> well, It's funny you say that because – yeah, I think everyone thinks that it's a breeze because I generally just show the finished product or, or mm-hmm. near 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 completion. Right. So, but most, I, I'd say like nine out of ten big jobs that I do, I uh, you know whether it's just at the beginning or before I start, I think why am I doing this to myself? So yeah, generally I do step back and I'm like, oh crap, this is not going to be fun. <laughs> so I mean, I don't know meters. We're in meters and 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 feet, so we probably have to convert. The last one that I did was like 400 square meters of, of wall, which it, um, yeah, was just that, that's pretty insanely huge. big. And I managed to knock it out in two weeks. So, and two weeks um, all by yourself doing this. Yeah. Well, I was lucky to have a few assistants on board. But, um, yeah, for the most part, like it's, it's, yeah, I guess I have like the creative direction and, um, I take, most of the responsibility on myself so okay. uh yeah so i think i did like 90 hours in the first week um oh wow and, wow. and people yeah, and people complain about working 80 hour work weeks <laughs> <laughs> i know when friends are like oh but i gotta start at you know like eight and i finish at five i'm like uh yeah no, don't 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 bark up my tree <laughs> that's wrong yeah, wrong exactly go, go to <laughs> yeah. sleep go to sleep go to sleep take it easy yeah uh, <laughs> so so when you when you're doing this now uh, of course, when you're tr- when you're mapping it out, you probably have a sketch, and you, or maybe mentally you have a sketch. But when you do it, you know h- how. I mean, th- there has to be a certain process that goes through your mind at that moment when you're really mapping it out. Beyond it being a big project, there has to be something simple that goes in your mind to help you to f- figure it all out before it gets done. Like it's done before it's done. 
Yeah, I actually say it's funny you say that. I actually say the, the preparation work and the planning generally takes twice as long or three times as long as the actual painting itself. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so I think, you know, as long as you get that right and you don't just jump straight into it, which a lot of us do with everything in life, we just mm -hmm. go head first into it. Yeah. Uh, I think, yeah, that then, then the, the actual painting itself is quite easy. Uh, but yeah, there's something called a, a scribble grid or sometimes, I mean, you can use technology where, where you can, uh, and I use projectors sometimes, but for the most part, yeah, I use a scribble grid and, and scale up that way, which is basically you just, you're mapping the whole wall out, um, so piece by piece, random, putting it together. Piece by, yeah. It's just like a big puzzle. If I really yeah. had to go into it, we'd probably be right. here for a while. Uh, but yeah, it's, when I sort of explain it to people, they still don't understand. But um, if you saw it visually, I think you'd understand how it sort of comes together. So oh, it's just like a puzzle. Yeah. And I'll explain it so yeah. everyone can understand this. You have a rectangle, you have little boxes, piece by piece, you go and do it, right? And piece pretty by much, piece, yeah. pretty much. <laughs> yeah, I said yeah. I simplified everything so people <laughs> won't have to go crazy. But, Thank you. Uh, I'm coming to you next time when someone wants that explained. <laughs> oh, you send them to me. We'll get them done in five seconds. So, so now, I mean, let, let's talk about some of the projects you've done. You know, mm -hmm. as as I mentioned, you got DJ behind, you got Elvis, but you've done other pieces of work that that I've seen that impressed me, and that's why I wanted you on the show because, I mean, it's just the talent that you have just just took me, and I said, wow, you know, because I've had other artists on the show. And I said, mm -hmm. I got to bring you on the show because I need you to tell your story and just talk about the work that you're doing. So I want you to talk about the work that you did, you, that you've done so far. Yeah. So I guess I've had some pretty incredible experiences, which has helped, you know, I guess, fast track all my career, um, fast track my career. Uh, some standout pieces that I've done, of course, of um, Dwayne Johnson and I did a piece of him and his mum and was able to meet him and deliver it to him mm -hmm. back in 2015. Uh, the Yankees, relevant. Oh, yeah. <laughs> New York Yankees. So I did a piece for CC, and um, he, I guess that was a gift from the team um, for his, um, for finishing up an inc incredible career. So, uh, yeah, and also I've, I've, I've painted a lot of music artists and sort of had some recognition from them. Uh, and yeah, I guess um, there's, there's, there's heaps of people. There's not not a lot of people that I haven't painted, but I haven't painted Elvis and sorry, yeah. wrong way, Elvis. But, uh, and I thought that, yeah, there's definitely a lot of people on my list. Um, but yeah, just just always different, the work that I'm doing, you know. Um, you, you've Arnold done Queen. As well. you, you've done Queen. Yes, Queen. That was yeah. a massive mural that I'd done. Uh, and that's, yeah, that, that was quite a special piece to me, I guess, because they were breaking down a lot of barriers in the, at the start of their career. Sure. And um, yeah, it sort of resonates with what, where I've been and, and where I am now and where I want to be as well. So uh, yeah, so I guess, yeah, it's, it's you know, because people are like, why do you paint these people? And I'm like, well, the stories that they have and, and you know, how they've defied the odds and how they've overcome so many barriers. Um, I like, you know, I guess, keeping that alive through my art and honoring incredible humans. Well, that's Sorry. what you do when yeah. people pass, when you stop speaking about them, you stop drawing them or, or, or putting them in some sort of art, they kind of disappear. So you're mm. keeping them relevant. You're keeping them yes. alive with your yeah. work. Yeah, definitely. Agreed. Yeah. And, and I Sorry. think that is very cool. Now, you've done some, you, you've done Tupac, you've done Biggie Smalls, you've done some of these artists. Now, when doing that, how do, how... I mean, what what came what came across your 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 mind to say, hey, you know what? I want to do Tupac. I want to do this. I want to do this. Is, is this something you get a feeling, or I mean, th these aren't commissioned jobs. So when you're doing them, it's like you know something inspires you to do it. Yeah, uh, I think back when I first started painting, there were a few clients who triggered um, me learning about more about um, hip hop and rap and and music culture. So I didn't actually know a lot about. Um, I guess Pac and Biggie and there's a lot of other artists that I've sort of come across and I'm like, wow, their their stories are incredible. Mm -hmm. So the more I got to learn about them and the more I got to, you know, listen and read about their stories and, you know, read about what they've done for their families and, and um, how their legacy lives on, that's where I sort of get inspired to paint them, I guess, and I might find images and I'm like, wow, like, you know, I can imagine how that looks as a photo, you know, and they say a, paint, a picture and a painting tells a thousand words. So sure. that's sort of what triggers it for me to um, then go ahead and paint. 
And, and um, you, yeah, yeah, and you have artists that they they paint, or you have people that draw and stuff like that, or artists that draw. I, I think it's a completely different story when you're absorbing the story, and then that's that's resonating in the work that you do. And this is the stuff that you're doing because it's not just like painting something of Elvis or doing anything like this or creating a piece of artwork. It's coming from the story that you learn and it, mm. it kind of comes out of you onto the, whatever canvas that may, may be a 50 foot wall or, <laughs> or a 12 by 12 uh, book. Yeah, exactly. So, and, and that's the thing, like I'm, you know, sometimes people come to me and, and they, you know, perhaps give me a, an idea um, and, and if that, if it doesn't resonate with me, if I feel like I can't actually communicate what they want me to on canvas, then I simply right. say, you know, I don't think I'm the person for you. So there have been jobs where I don't take on because, you know, and they could be like maybe religious orientated mm -hmm. or something like that. And I'm like, you know what, I'm actually, I'm, I'm not that I'm not willing to learn, but I feel like I'm not the right person to, you know, to tell that story for you. So that's honorable, yeah. and, you know, because you have a, yeah. you have artists out there that are starving artists, and they they'll take on whatever gig they can take on so they can make money. You're yeah. you're, you're you're with what you're doing, you know, you're turning down paid assignments to say, hey, you know what, I won't make what you want me to make, so better for me not to do it. Yes, exactly. Yeah, I think that's where people need to, you know, I have obviously been at that stage where I just took on anything and everything to, you know, better my craft and learn how to be, how to paint essentially. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, yeah, so they would probably be, you know, but in, in saying that, like I wasn't charging for, for that. So there's, I think when you get to a point where you are charging for your work and, and people are investing in your work, you know, if your heart's not 100% in it, just don't do it. So. Yeah, of course, but you know, some people they do whatever they need. They want they they do whatever they need to do to make ends meet. But I believe yeah. that with art, it has to represent. Like you leave a little piece of your soul on every piece of work that you do. That's the way I see it. Yeah, you know? definitely. And, and, and yeah. you and you see it. You see it. I mean, I, I'm just a, a fan of art. I love going to the Met, the MoMA, everything else, and I love this stuff. The Louvre, whatever. Um, the bottom line is when you see this work, you can like your work. You can stand in front of it continue to look and kind of really dive into it. And I think yeah, that, that's yeah. the effect that you're trying to get. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And I think, uh, you, you know, like actually, because everyone always asks, like, do you go to museums and, and art galleries and do you just stand there for, there for hours? And I said, I don't, I, I, do, I wasn't really interested up until sort of like the last few years. So mm -hmm. I think with maturity came that appreciation as well. Um, just because I could paint earlier on didn't mean that I had that appreciation. So, and right. everyone's different too. You know, sometimes people say, oh, like I, I don't have any interest in art. I'm like, that's fine. Like I'm not offended. Like everyone right. has their different interests. Um, but yeah, for the most part, people who stand in, in front of my work, it's incredible to see the like reaction. And that's, I guess, um, the special part of it. Well, that's the payoff with yeah. that. You know, like, like you have musicians and I've come across them. They're musicians, yeah. they're talented. When they're so much, they're so deep into their work, they won't listen to anyone else's work. And yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. like, you know, <laughs> come on. You have to appreciate other artists because that's what makes you better at your craft. Yeah. So yeah, that's, that's definitely. Some, yeah, because you get to see different things. So now, 100%. What, what are you working on now that uh, that you can share with the world? So I have a few massive projects coming up next year that I can't really disclose anything about, but there's, yeah, so pretty exciting projects coming up. I'm just basically just doubling down and going bigger and better. Okay. So uh, that's exciting and that you'll see that sort of come to fruition early next year, mid next year. Uh, and then, of course, I, I sometimes still do have a few canvases. I try to keep some downtime in between my massive projects um, mm -hmm. to give my body and my mind a rest. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, another uh, doing a piece of Elvis behind me and a piece of um, The Rock. And I do have a massive Kobe Bryant piece um, to the right of me. I haven't painted him um, since his passing. I just feel like it wasn't the right time. I have painted him previously, but since he passed, I haven't painted him again. So mm -hmm. I'm struggling to sort of get through this piece and I've, it's been very slow. 
but I, I'll just chip away at it when I feel like it, when I'm inspired. So well, that, that, that's that's being an artist, you know. When yeah, when the inspiration hits you is when you have to do it, you know. Because I like yeah. I, I I paint, and, but for me to do it, I need to be motivated. Something You're has to send me a painting. I got to see your work. Oh <laughs> Lord, yeah. I don't know. That's in story. Have to wait a little while, but I'll be you, not hating you off after this. To send it <laughs> but you know, when you do this stuff. It, it's not on demand. It's just, it happens. You'll wake yeah. up in the morning, maybe two o'clock in the morning, like something hits you and then you're painting till two o'clock the next morning. That's how yeah. it is. That's how it is with exactly. what you're doing. And I know that. And I know that. And I, and I, that's why, you know, when, when you're, when you, you did, you did the rock, you did DJ. Now, when you did that work, when you met him with the work, and this, these are the, the important questions here, right? Now, yeah. when you, when you presented him with that, how was that? How was that feeling for you? Oh, that's a, not that's a, a good question. Not, not as a fan, yeah. but as an artist, you know. Yeah, um, as an artist. Yeah, I guess I wasn't real. Like, I obviously knew who DJ was, and I knew, you know, he'd been around for many years. So I wasn't a, I wasn't a fan of him though. So I think it was, it, it was me approaching him as an artist mm. from the get go, which is good. Uh, and I feel like I could really take in those moments and just it put things in concrete for me that, because I had some doubts, obviously, you know, am I going to do this as a living? Is this my forever? Um, you know, I'm currently studying health sciences and I want to be a food scientist. So it meeting him as an artist mm -hmm. and, and him saying essentially that I'd be silly not to pursue it was, yeah, it's something that I probably needed. Um, and if I was a fan, I probably would have been blinded by sure, <laughs> by sure. these words and, and perhaps not made the most of this um and, I, you know, I was young and, and I say that, you know, if I was to meet him now, I'd probably have a million things going on in my mind and, and that would affect, you know, me as a person meeting right. him and I'd be nervous and, and not thinking straight. So right. I was a little bit young and carefree back then and, uh, yeah, I guess the more I got to, add, like I knew who Dwayne Johnson was but I didn't know a lot about his story and his background when I initially met mm -hmm. him and got in contact with him. So obviously over the years I've learned to, to respect him even more um and you know grown to just realize that he's the most incredible and genuine human on the planet so yeah he, he is yeah. He, he, you know, dj's a good guy he always has been yeah always crazy. Has been, you know yeah. and, and it's, it's good that you that happened when you were younger because yeah. you didn't know any better is and i think that's when the magic happens because it's yeah. like it's like uh, you mentioned the, the the yankees okay there was a there's a movie um uh, for love of the game with Kevin Costner, mm -hmm. where you, you had yes, I've seen that. Yeah, you, you know, when, the, when the batter went up, he was a rookie. He didn't really know Kevin Costner, and Kevin Costner said, "All right, you don't fear me. That means you're going to go for the fences." And that's exactly what the kid was doing. He didn't know yeah. any better, so he had no fear. So with yeah. you, you didn't know him, so it was like okay, it was more of an affirmation of the work that you've done. Yeah, definitely. And I think yeah. that's why it happened too. Like sometimes when you chase things, you know, you can you can manifest things and, and whatnot. But I think sometimes when you chase things and you're like, you know, obsessed with this idea and perhaps don't focus on other things and th these things don't happen. So, yeah, right. I, I, that's why I believe, you know, everything happens for a reason and the way that it sort of happened naturally and not forced, it was, um, yeah, sort of, I guess, a yeah. testament to what I just said before. So, yeah. Definitely. And, but you've you've met you've you've presented him with with your work, but you also presented Arnold Schwarzenegger, and everyone knows Arnold. Arnold. I mean, <laughs> yeah. you, you hear the word, the name Arnold, you know who it is. Yeah. yeah I mean, exactly. It doesn't matter. You can have a million Arnolds in the world. There's only one Arnold. <laughs> I don't know why people even use the name. Don't name me Kid Arnold. It doesn't work. <laughs> you know. But there's but no second Arnold. There, there's no second Arnold. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> but when you when you you did, I think you did two pieces for him. I think you did two. Yeah. yeah, you did two pieces. So when you when you first did that first piece, was that something that he wanted? That is that something that you did on your own? How did that come about? The the first piece that I did that um that how we met basically uh was at a live what uh, the Arnold Expo. I think they probably have that uh in the U.S. I'm not sure where they host yeah, it. Yeah, in Ohio, Arnold. Ohio. Yeah, yeah. There we go. Yep. Uh, so we had that in Australia, in Melbourne, and I was painting a live painting I was uh, for a sports brand and I was painting him live and then he came through. Um, and I, I, I mean, I think he'd be pretty aware of his images um, from back in his bodybuilding days. And I'd actually like converted a black and white image into colour mm -hmm. live 
just by eye. So, you know, whether he knew that or not, um, he was pretty taken back by it and he actually Hold asked up. Wait, on wait, 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 wait. You did this just by eye? You looked at and you just did it by eye live in front of thousands of people? Yes, yeah. No, no, no <laughs> pressure, right? No pressure. <laughs> it's Arnold yeah. looking over your shoulder saying, hmm, interesting. <laughs> and I hadn't done it before either, so it was a bit of a, yeah, oh, I guess oh, one of those things that probably better <laughs> better just doing on the spot and learning as you go. Oh, so, wow. That's funny. Yeah, so that, uh, he came through and he obviously was, I think, quite taken back by it. Asked to buy it, I think, on the spot, um, but the, the, the company were actually doing a giveaway of it. So mm -hmm. anyway, so his assistant got in contact with me straight away and they asked me if I could do a piece for um, their charity after school all stars. Okay. Uh, and I said yes, and I did that piece. And then a few months later, little did I know, I was walking into his home with my painting like on display, right as you walk into that, his house. That, that, so, that's awesome. I mean, yeah. See that, that see stuff like that. These are stories you. You know, people can't even think or fathom to say, hey, this can happen to me, but this is yeah. stuff that has happened to you. And, you know, and you, you, you have much more going on in your life, you know, and you have a, your, your future in art. I'm saying this now on this show for everyone to listen to. You know, th this is you're amazing because, look, mm -hmm. and, and, and to be honest, look, we had some difficulties with the show earlier on. That was my fault. But Danielle, <laughs> I think was, it's hard when you're on the other side of the world. Yeah, so definitely exactly. no one's fault here. No, no, but I'm just and it's a crazy that, time now. So. It is, but it was it was yeah. your level of patience and everything that you know made me say, hey, you know what? Exactly what I thought about you. I was right on the money. And your future as as an artist is just gonna get greater and greater and greater. This I do know because you're gonna get better and better and you're gonna evolve in the work that you do. And it's Thank just inevitable, you. you know, and it happens with great artists. They do it. And, and all of a sudden you're creating magic when you look five years before. Wow, I never thought I was going to do that. You know, yeah. and all of a sudden, you know, your painting is selling for a gazillion dollars and stuff like that. And you sought after, you know, but I think that, you know, having your art outlive you, you know, in, 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 in life, I think that yeah. is probably the greatest gift that anyone can leave behind whether you're an artist or, yeah an artist a, a, a singer an actor is or a sports legend something that you leave behind because you, you do these great things and i think yeah that's what you're doing too thank you oh I, you know what i haven't even thought of it like that <laughs> i always sort of mention i'm like you know artists like you know that you know for the most part artists only make their money when they're gone mm -hmm. so um, i always you know sort of touch on that but i've never really thought of it like that that when i am gone like they still live on and whatnot so yeah, really these, cool these are going to be the stories yeah. that people are going to talk about and they're going to look at your work whether it's on a building whether it's here whether it's there you know you as you're as you know in the next 10 years the work that you're doing today is going to be like wow that's good but wow look at this now and it's just going to yeah. get better and that's the way it is but here goes another thing you're, you're also involved in fitness right Yes, I do. I th yes, ah, I this do is love, now we're getting love, to the meeting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, so yeah, you, you you you've been you've been training for a little bit. You don't compete though, or do no, you? No, I don't compete. No, um, I think. I, you know, and I say this now, but like I think doing murals on the scale that I do is literally like a sport in itself. So, um, I think. I do look after my body and my mind and, and my health and my fitness um, to be able to work the hours that I do. So I probably, you know, like, look, I absolutely love sport and I'd love to compete and I do have like a, a fierce fire burning inside me that, you know, I know that anything I do that I, I'll, I'll be very competitive at. Oh, yeah. But, um, yeah, I try not to like push the, which I have in the past, push the limits too much anymore and just, do you know, do what I can. So, yeah. Well, you know, um, just to the just, yeah, just you, regular training and, and keeping fit. Yeah, so, you, get, yeah. you get involved in that scene, then you're going to scare people. You, you, <laughs> you walk around with trophies and, 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 and crowns. I think I'd scare that. myself. So, yeah, you may, yeah. You may. But uh, yeah, yeah. I, I think it's important for people, anyone that is, is doing anything in life, to embrace fitness, embrace, embrace health, because that's what gives you the best quality of life at the end of the day. Definitely. You know, yeah. especially what you're do what you're doing. It's you know, people don't don't realize it, but when you have a uh, when you have an assignment, mm. sometimes it's timed where you got to get it done in this amount of time. So now 
it becomes stressful too. If you're not fit, yeah. you can't deal with the stress. Can't keep up. So yeah, definitely. Yeah, because it all affects like, you know, your, your fit, how you're feeling affects your mind and your mind affects your body as well. So it's all relevant. And that's why, you know, I've, and it's interesting you say that because, you know, the last two weeks I've had this massive project uh, and I haven't, I, I only was able to fit like two workouts in and I was working my body out every day. Like I was working 16 hour days, you know, I was up and down, like physically demanding. Mm -hmm. um, but at the end of it, I was incredibly anxious. Uh, and I sort of, I was like, you know what? Like, I actually think this is because I haven't been, you know, like obviously painting, I've released a lot of endorphins through that, but I think exercise is another, another part of your brain. Um, and I, 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 I put it down to that. I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing this anxiety again. So I've done two, another two, like two workouts back to back this week, gotten out for walks mm -hmm. um, and I'm feeling great again. So very, very interesting. At least as long as you're aware of that and you're aware of your body and what affects. Well, you know what it is? So you're, you're, you're like me. See, if I don't train, I start getting anxious. So yeah. when I do train, it's interesting. You have, sometimes you have epiphanies. You start thinking about things you need to do and you have mm. this, this certain clarity. And yeah. you're like, wow. Yeah. You know, you wouldn't be able yeah. to, to think that clearly if you weren't working out or you weren't pushing yourself a little bit, you know, and you probably get that with your artwork too. Yeah, just de definitely. And I think it, it, it instills like a discipline in you. If you can sort of commit to something like that, that's help, helping bettering yourself, you can sort of apply that to other things in life as well. So Yeah, and I, I think that's a yeah. great thing. And if you with the fitness and the art and doing what you're doing as i said i think you're destined for greatness you know and and i and i and, I, and i'm calling it i'm calling it now I'm calling it now because what you've done now is nothing compared to what you're going to do later on and i know one thing like right now because i the, we, we, the time is getting being cut short for the show uh, yeah, don't cry, audience, and everything. Don't worry. <laughs> you know, but we, we're going to have Danielle back on, at, at, you know, and after the holidays and everything, because we're going to be able to talk about the projects that you have lined up that you that you're going to be yes. those massive projects. I Hopefully, be able to tell you more about them. So <laughs> yeah, well, we're going to show pictures on the show and everything, so that we can we can talk about it. You know, but I wanted to, you know, kind of put the spotlight on you because I think it's important for people out there to know who you are because i again i know where you're going to wind up being later on so i gotta catch you now because later on you're not gonna you're gonna say lou who <laughs> you, don't bother me you know uh, i hope so but no i don't think so oh, okay <laughs> all right always be around. <laughs> yeah yeah but you know you're, you're gonna you're gonna be doing some amazing things still and and I, I i do appreciate you and the work that you do and i you know we're gonna bring you on again we're going to bring you on again. I'm excited. Yeah, because we're going to talk about some other stuff and we're going to show you art and everything and we're going to impress people. They're going to fall on the floor. They, they're not going to believe it, <laughs> uh, how things are going to be. You know, but I'm, pre I'm pretty sure you're probably not going to do a Trump painting anytime soon. So we'll... No, no. Nah. <laughs> well, I'll abort that mission well, before it's even started. It. So. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. You know, so, I, won't, I won't touch anything politics in America. I don't think I'll stay away from it. Ours are just as bad here, so don't worry about it. Yeah, you need, you need to, you know, stick with what you're doing and tell stories through your art. And that's yeah. what you're doing. Now, what I want you to do, if you can, you know, just let the viewers and, and the listeners know how to – learn more about you i can give the website but i want you to do it because they, they, they'll appreciate your voice better than mine oh bless thank you uh yeah so www.daniellesartwork.com and then uh you can also find me on instagram and that's danielle's artwork as well so yeah okay that's that's all most, most of my things are on there ah, <laughs> i yeah. pop up in a few other places but yeah but that's where they can find the media stuff and i and i do implore you know, the viewers and listeners, you know, follow Danielle Weber, what she's doing, her artwork and her career, because you're going to be amazed and you're going to see the growth. And Danielle, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for being so patient with me today. No, that's fine. It was nothing, hey, honestly. Thank hey, you. No, thank, thank you. you. And thank you for coming on. And we're going to have you on again. Okay. So again, for Amazing. listeners out there, follow Danielle Weber, check out our work, and we'll be back with you for the next uh, segment of the UCW radio show. Amazing. Right. Thanks for having me. Thanks. Hang on. I'm going to stop this recording now.